All right, Mark Deering here from the Adventure Channel. We have two rock stars with us today that just came back from Iceman in our back backyard. Um, so we thought we'd catch up with them real quick. We've got Cole Patton and Sevilla Blanc with us. How's it going, guys? Great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Mark. We're excited to, to talk with you today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, you guys have a, a very cool vlog on YouTube. Um, I did a lot of creeping on you, so I so I can kind of check in a lot of different things. I'm a YouTuber myself, so I, I binge watch YouTube. I don't know about you guys, but uh, kind of how I get my media. I don't even watch much of the news anymore. But uh, <laughs> so let's let's jump into a few things. Um, so first of all, uh, how was your first experience? Um, not so much the race at Iceman, but how was your first experience up in Traverse City? It was awesome. Yeah, I think from the moment we flew into the city, just with all the fall colors and it was super beautiful. Um, and then, yeah, everybody was so welcoming and it continued on into the race and the venue afterwards and before. It was just a super fun experience and got us really hyped for our final race of the season, which was, um, yeah, it's been it was a long season. So we were excited to finish it on this one. Yeah, that's uh, that we we kind of treat it the same way. Uh, we kind of treat it like the uh, the Super Bowl, the end of the season um, here in Michigan. And and you guys may or may not know. It'd be interesting for me to ask. Like obviously, living in Michigan, uh, we've got two giant races: the Barry Robay and the Iceman. And they both, I think, have a national reputation or exposure. Um, but talk a little bit about that. How did you guys hear about the race, find the race, and what are and how much of the race you hear of from uh, Colorado or wherever you guys are at the time. Yeah, I, I think it was huge and it's been on our radar for a few years now. Um, I, I first heard about it when Pacey McKelvin and Howard Grotz came and raced. And I think that was the year Howard won. And uh, just them talking about the community and how much excitement there is around the event um, in Michigan, in Traverse City, how many people come together and cheer it on. Um, that's just really special. Like being a full-time racer, those are the events we want to seek out and especially the events we want to end the year on, um, just all that great energy. So, so I was really excited to check it out and it fully exceeded all of my expectations this year. It was, it was really fun and a great way to cap off the year. Yeah, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Cause like I say, we're a little, we're a little biased, you know, we think we've got something pretty sweet in our backyard here, but I, I think, I think it is something that, uh, you know, those events, those events that, uh, who was I, I think I was talking with Alexi and, uh, those events that the amateurs get to do their thing in the morning and then get to watch the pros at night or in the afternoon, you know, those are really fun events. You know, we get, uh, oh, yeah. us as amateurs just kind of love that, that environment. Yeah. yeah, well, us us as pros love it maybe even more because uh, it makes us feel like we're something or we're part of something bigger. You know, we're we're used to going to a lot of races where there's only other pros and everyone's in their little focus bubble, and it's really nice. It's refreshing to go to these events where you have other people that are that are going there to complete the ride or or to race. Um, you you just feel like you're part of this really big community, and at the end of the day, we're all racing our bikes and uh it's special to be part of that hey thanks for bringing up bikes yeah <laughs> bike right there that's sponsor correct nice. <laughs> is that yours that is mine that is mine I'm, I'm a little disappointed mine doesn't seem to go as fast as either of yours i don't know, <laughs> mine. I don't know. yours came with the motor did yours have a motor in it oh <laughs> uh, yeah we've loved ours that yeah. was that's what we rode um Iceman with the less. So such a, yeah. such a yeah. fun bike. It was awesome. It is. I love it. I love it as well. So, so yeah, let's talk about, um, you know, I wanted to hear your um, take on the excitement around the race. Cause like I say, it's got a lot of hype around it. Um, and then I want, now let's talk about the race itself, you know, and I guess we'll go individually. Um, I got to see some highlights, I think of both, but let's talk about the race and, um, how, how was the competition? Um, was it, um, you know, I guess let's talk about all that. So each of you just kind of, kind of take a turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it was a pretty super stacked field in both races. And 
for the women's race, we had uh, Sophia, Rose, Katarina, Alexis, um, among a lot of others. I think they even announced at the start line that it was one of the biggest women's fields they've seen ever. So it was super cool to, uh, to race them. And, um, yeah, we, we had a, a super tight race the whole time. I mean, there wasn't a lot of separation. It was kind of the, uh, top five, six, seven of us in a group the whole time until the last, uh, like five, five K to go, just kind of like the men's as well. But, um, yeah, it was super exciting, super tactical. It felt almost like a game the whole race. Um, because the, the course is, you know, there's not a lot of climbing, so there's not a lot of places for separation and attacks. Um, so it was like a drafting game kind of, and, and who could play their tactics the best. Um, so for us, it came down to, yeah, the last three K and really like icebreaker Hill. Um, and then it just, the last 10 minutes was just a full on sprint. Um, everybody attacking everywhere. And uh, yeah, super tight tactical, but very exciting. I think the most exciting race and definitely finish I've ever been a part of. And so much, um, like many little mistakes made and so many places to learn and improve from. So it was really exciting. And I, I want to see more and be a part of more races like that because those are the ones that you learn so much from. That's cool. That is really cool. Yeah. The um, I have not much to, I mean, I've been you know, a little bit of traveling for racing and stuff, but not obviously near what you guys have, but, uh, yeah, that course, that course is, um, uh, especially this year, since you guys haven't raced it before that last, um, say six K or so was, was fast, you know, and, uh, I knew for you guys, the pros that that meant some really high, high speeds, <laughs> um, you know, cause we're as amateurs going pretty fast through there and. And so I was like, I was telling a couple of the guys, I'm like, I would love to have a camera out there. They got, I, they tried it one year. I wish there was a way that they could have cameras in all those sections to, to watch. You know, that's, that's one drawback of trying to, um, like, where am I going to go? Williamsburg? Am I going to go to, you know, the last hill? Am I going to wait for the finish line? Um, you guys may or may not have heard too in years previous, they would have you come in through the finish line and go through the excitement and go through everything and then send you back out for say a mile or so. Um, so that was kind of cool, you know, for spectators, uh, for that. I don't know how it was on the race side. Um, but, uh, no, it's, it's, a uh, it's very cool. And you were on the podium. Me, um, they only did three deep. So I was in fifth. It was, it was so tight. I think, um, we were like, everybody was the top five was eight seconds off of Rose who won. So, um, yeah, it was super exciting on icebreaker Hill. We were all together and then, you know, you kind of come into that tight chicane. Um, and yeah, I was super close, but it was, yeah, it was awesome to be a part of all the action and that the noise on icebreaker Hill was insane from the crowds. I'd, I'd heard it. I would heard of it, um, that, you know, everybody gets out in lines the last few kilometers but it was next level it was like bigger louder than a world cup it was so cool that i was just going to ask that question you know with you guys you know all the traveling you've done and the races i mean i watch those on tv uh and you, i haven't experienced those live you know before or even uh, snowshoe I haven't been down to um check that out live yet but the um so that that's true though i mean that so the it's that i mean i think it is but that, that's good to hear yeah, it is. No, totally. Um, yeah. I mean, I would compare it to Nova Mesto world cup where everybody is the Czech fans get so rowdy and just are almost encroaching on the course. And, um, it's so, yeah, it's, it's, it's very similar and it was awesome that just, and they're cheering everybody, you know, the, from the, the juniors to the top pros and, um, yeah, very cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, Cole, Cole, let's hear about yours a little bit. How'd your race go? Yeah, it was super exciting. And I guess just to touch on the, the women's race, I, that field was so stacked. There were multiple Olympians. I mean, that, that was the race. So I was bummed I couldn't watch it because they were racing at the same time. But uh, yeah, really exciting. Um, but yeah, uh, our race was really good too. Uh, I knew it was going to be super tactical. The, the course is flat. There's some punches. 
but it really, it's, it's going to stay together. Um, so it was, it was almost like, uh, there's already a big equipment choice that played into it. Um, so before the race, everyone had different setups and whatnot, not that a big element in the race too. But for me, I knew that, um, uh, with, with my mountain biking background, I had a little advantage over the, the small bits of single track and technical areas. Um, so I really wanted to play those to my favor and try to be in the front and kind of string out the field through those. Um, I knew I wasn't necessarily going to break away. Um, but if I could just push the pace and, uh, kind of sling out the field, then over time it would help. Um, so that was kind of my strategy. And then it was just so fast, so tactical, lots of drafting. Um, the guys on gravel bikes, Kerry Werner, Jeff Kabush, they would just fly on the flat sections. Um, most of the mountain bikers were under geared. So it's just this game of compromise, which was really cool about Iceman. You don't really get that in many other races. And um, especially in mountain bike events, it's usually just all out from the gun. Whereas with events like Iceman or even Schwamigan, um, it's a mountain bike race, but there's so many tactics. So, so it's a really cool kind of cross of disciplines. Um, and then you see guys like Kerry Warner, who's a World Cup cyclocross racer come race, or, you know, Alexi, who now he's an off-road racer, but he was a, a world tour roadie and then mountain biker. So it's, it's special, but, uh, but yeah, it all came down to the end. Um, the the finish was so exciting there was a move that went probably with seven to five kilometers to go and we didn't think we were going to pull him back um alexi and i were working on the front to try to pull this move back alexi is incredibly strong strong i would say stronger than me um but he was taking the majority of the pulls and i was getting worried because we were pulling back the whole group and and it's this game of patience when it comes down to it. It's, you know, you want to be on the front to, to pull back the move, but you also don't want to deplete your energy because as soon as you pull, as soon as you get the move back, the people drafting you are going to have more energy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everyone was getting really impatient. Alexi finally just said, screw it. And threw a massive attack with maybe, three kilometers to go. It was like the longest sprint ever. Um, and I couldn't hang. Um, I knew that if I, if I tried to stay with him, I wouldn't be able to have any sprint. Um, but Alexi pulled back the guy out front and then we slowly pulled him back. And then, uh, Carrie came around me. I was able to hop in his draft and it all came back together on icebreaker, which is insane you know for for everyone it was it was the the climactic part of the race and um everyone uh it was me alexi carrie and uh brian matter and those three guys took the inside line and i was able to swing wide on the outside and i knew i had i had to get around them uh before the shoot because that was really the the selective part of the finish if you weren't leading there it was, it was almost impossible to get around um so i gave it everything i had on on icebreaker and was able to hit that shoot first and, and maintain my position to the finish that's what i was going to ask is you must so you did hit the shoot first because i you know that was narrow that was narrower than normal it's usually a little bit wider i don't know if um, that was by design but i feel like the shoot was usually a little bit wider it was it was single final one and a half wide maybe yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, if you see uh, the video that Kerry put up on his YouTube channel, um, it really shows a, a great point of view for the finish and everything that went down. But there, there was really nowhere for him to get around me um, once we hit that shoot. So for me, that was kind of the finish line. I mean, of course, it's not the finish line. But, um, but yeah, it, it definitely increases your chances if you're hitting that shoot first. You know what? I did watch his video yesterday and I did not watch the, I'm gonna have to go back and watch the finish. I watched a lot of it. I watched, uh, yeah. I watched you, uh, taking off a few times and then, you know, him, him bridging you a little bit. And, uh, yep. 
um you kept looking over and uh, yeah. I, mean, I love watching you guys out there that like you all had <laughs> gopros on and we could live stream that somehow <laughs> yeah I know. someday that would yeah, be awesome yes. yeah yes. yeah it was uh that was cool the some of that that uh i think they call it water bottle hill or something like yeah. that and the, the speed you hit that at you know and i was like <laughs> I, that you flew down that and there's a and I was sitting there watching and I got nervous for you because I knew that there's a tree at the bottom of it yeah sharp <laughs> corner yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know that's that was one of the the points of um the selection point that I was thinking about in the race you know there's there's those little hills and descents and since I was on a mountain bike I'd have uh, a lot better traction and I can carry more speed going downhill so if I could just you know turn the screws a little bit on the downhill makes everyone else a little more uncomfortable and yeah i was uncomfortable watching it <laughs> and i like downhill that's good. Yeah, yeah that's what's so fun about it it's just uh you gotta you gotta keep it interesting and spicy mm -hmm. definitely nice well cool so yeah i wanted to hear you know about some of the race itself um so what would you guys say to other pros um that maybe have not raced it yet i mean is it something you guys are going to kind of share with a couple of your close riding friends and say man come up to this thing or or keep it a, keep it a close secret for yourself to... <laughs> <laughs> i think uh i you know the more competition the better i think it just it adds more to the event it makes your result more credible you know i'm never i'm never one to to not want more pros to come i think the more pros that come uh the better for, for everyone. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's so exciting. It's a great way to end the year. And, it, and it's one of those events that really gives back to the pros too. We have, they have a great amount of prize purse, which is super helpful. And also so much coverage. I and mean, we're talking right now about this. There's so many events that we do that just fly under the radar, you know, that all the pros are, are so focused on. Whereas, I really learned this this year chasing events like Iceman or Schwam again, or, you know, there's so many of them in the States now that there's so much opportunity. And when you can do those, it's way more fun and it's better for us as professionals. So uh, I, I'm a huge advocate for, for Iceman in these events. I think, you know, the more pros that can do it, the better, and, and they will really enjoy it. And, and it pays off for them in the future too. Yeah. You, One thing. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. One thing I think is also so special and cool about Iceman is that it draws in the whole family. You know, you have so many different levels of people racing. Um, and that's what's so cool is like it's ex the race itself is accessible to everybody, not just, you know, the venue, the yep. festival being there. So, yeah, I think it's an awesome event for everybody. Um, and yeah, I really hope to see we're definitely going to tell our friends about it. <laughs> it'll be it's yeah it'll be fun yeah we were able to ride with uh norte the development yes. team the day after mm -hmm. which was awesome but uh there we rode with this uh this young athlete named paxson and he was the youngest rider to ever complete iceman at eight years old oh, which I was hear, I, incredible yeah I yeah think and, i might have saw him i you know what I think I that might be who we have video of somebody while we were waiting for you guys. Yep, that was him. Ah, going up yeah. Apparently, he came up the hill about ten minutes before we did, and he right. had a massive crowd cheering him, which is <laughs> which is awesome. Oh man, that's what's so cool. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. You you kind of you walked right into my next question actually, and I wanted to congratulate you guys on that. The um, you do it not just that you didn't do it just at Iceman. You've done it at other races where the following day um, you go out and you um, work with the youth. I mean, you guys are, I mean, what, I mean, to have a, a pro come and talk to you, work with you. Um, kudos to you guys for doing that. That, that How did that originate? And uh, keep doing it for sure. But how did that originate? Thanks. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's, it's such an important thing and it really fuels our fire to be able to ride with those kids. And I think, you know, both of us didn't really have, um, that accessible mentor or pro when we were that age, or even just getting into the sport a little later. So for us, we've been trying to do it at, uh, most of the U S races this year. And, you know, the day after it's, it's not too much for us to just 
hang around and, and it's so fun to ride with the kids and, um, just, yeah, we do a little skills practice or just ride with them. Um, and just being able to be accessible and, um, be there for them is, is huge and, and, uh, really fuels us. So it was super awesome to be able to ride with Norte and what a huge group that came out of like all ages. So they took me on a, a longer ride, which was Cole, <laughs> Cole put me in the, in the, uh, group that we went out and we did some of the, um, new trails on the Vasa, uh, trail network. And then Cole stuck around and, um, did a little skills work on the pump tracks and stuff. So ate donuts. Yeah. Ate donuts. <laughs> so cool. I got wiped cool. out. <laughs> What's going on with this Cole? Sending her out to do the work. <laughs> She's stronger than me, you know. <laughs> no, it was super fun, and yeah, it was awesome. No, yeah, that yeah, like I say, that is uh, so. Um, I'm in Grand Rapids, which is two hours south of Traverse City, and we have uh, what they call dirt dogs. Um, so it's like our version of Norte, and you know, Norte is just. Um, I, I interviewed one of the guys there at the expo, and they've got like 1,200 riders I think we're in like the 500 range or something like that that show up each week and you know I coach and and it's so 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 awesome and rewarding I think I get as much out of it as the kids get you know I mean in a weird way yeah. I didn't do it for that reason you know but um it's you know and I see them progress and then you know I'm like they're on my heels by the end of the summer like just you know these I'm like and I tell their parents, I'm like, all right, you better sign him up for racing, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. That's that's what it's all about. I think I think a big part of it was we didn't grow up with anyone our age riding, you know, near our hometown. And then you see these groups and, and how healthy they are and how all these kids have friends their age that are riding and they're challenging each other. And and that's what that's what's so cool to see. Growth in our sport. It's special. Yeah. Exactly. I totally agree. And so I was really happy to see that. And, uh, you know, then I watched the vlogs and you, it's not just a one-time thing, you guys, but, uh, you do it other places. So keep it up, keep it up. We got to hey. push hey. this next uh, generation, yeah. this next generation up there. So, uh, let's see here. So let's talk about, um, by the way, awesome YouTube channel. I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan. <laughs> Thanks for um, working you. on it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we gotta hopefully talk off camera. <laughs> Sorry, say again. Oh, hopefully it's not too cringy. <laughs> no, it's it's. I love it. I love it. I uh, I gotta talk off camera with you, and I want to talk all geeky stuff like you know gear you're using and all that because I'm I, I love that stuff too. And you guys are doing a really good job, so keep that up too. Um, because back to the youth and back to even amateurs or um, you know, different people that's inspiring too, you know, watching you guys and, and seeing real life, real life circumstances, um, like, you know, what you're, what you're going for, through, you know, your breakfast, what you're, you know, oh, we always eat this, we always eat that. I mean, that's entertaining guys. Like, uh, um, it's entertaining. It's, it's, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, inspiring. And like I say, who wants to watch the news nowadays? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah. We really yeah. appreciate it. We're, I think our, our goal with the YouTube channel is to just really pull back the curtain, you know, to our lives and, and show, you know, what it's like, what, what our lives are like and, and what kind of we do. I, I feel like it's another effort of being more approachable and accessible. So, you know, so many pros are kind of, uh, uh, you know, closed off and uh, that's not even the right word, but, um, but yeah, we, we just want to make sure that, that we're sharing what we're going through and, uh, and hopefully being helpful and, providing you know tips and, and little things that uh that everyone can gain from it is it does it does um so you know uh, i do you know the the we're starting to do more and more of like these style um interview videos and we're starting to do some state stuff for recap racing um and i just have a passion for the sport and i love video and all that so um i see the little bits and pieces of people coming up to me you know saying how they appreciate this and that. And so you mix in your guys's talent, you know, with what you're doing at such a high level, it's, it's a recipe for awesome. So, um, keep up, keep that up too. I'm giving you all these thumbs up, keep up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about overseas. Uh, that looked pretty cool. Um, 
And I did not realize that you guys were in some of those races over there. And that was amazing to watch. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Who are you first? This is, this is Sevilla's topic because <laughs> she's like on world domination mode. <laughs> she has so. two World Cup podiums this year. So, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's been an exciting year. Um, yeah, we were over there for the first two World Cups in May, both of us. And then um, I was over there in the later summer for World Champs and um, a World Cup. And yeah, it was it's it's such a different um, it's a different animal over there. Just the the competition, the courses. Um, there's so much action. And uh, it's definitely a, a level up from what I'm used to racing in the U.S. So, um, yeah, I think the more that that I can get over there and, and experience that, um, the better, the more you learn. But, yeah, this year um, was great. I had some some bad luck in the early season races, but then um, at Lenzer Hyde World Cup and then back here in the States at Snowshoe, um, I was able to put it together. So. I uh, was third at both of those in the U23 race. So it's my last, or it was my last year as a U23. So I'm glad I could kind of um, work my way up over the last four years of, of trying to learn <laughs> from that field. And um, next year I'll be racing elite. So it'll be a big step up, but I'm excited. Amazing. Amazing. That is so cool. So the, um, the traveling alone looked like it was uh, quite quite interesting with COVID going on and everything that you had to you know the test the test the test and then yeah yeah um, it, it's incredible I mean going over there it's just such a different world yeah you know, all the the competition aside just traveling over there it it takes so long to adjust to that um, just that different environment and we've been over there multiple mm -hmm. times we've had we've had a few years of traveling over and racing world cups and, you know, everything from the grocery store, you're, you have all different kinds of foods and you don't know what to eat or what to buy. And, and then the time zones way different. The travel alone takes 30 hours. So you just took all of your own pancake mix. The whole yeah. Time. We took our pancake mix. <laughs> then we forgot it in Germany. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So you learn like little comfort things like, and for us it's pancake mix. For me, it's pancake mix and pillow. I have to have those yeah, two things. Those are key. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's way different. And then especially throwing COVID, um, when we were over there, we we probably took uh, at least a test every other day, and um, yeah, that's really challenging. And over there, you pay for each test, so it really adds up. Um, but at least we could have bracing, and uh, and that that was really needed at the time. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's different. Where you you learn so much when you go over there, and then the competition is so crazy. Every it's so cutthroat. Um, okay. so it really helps you grow as an athlete. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, yeah the the courses the courses look um, crazy online. So you know if they look crazy online, that they're nuts in person. I mean, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. It's true. Yeah, I remember going over there you know, as a U23, um, when I was, you know, first, second year, U23, eight, 19 years old, um, just trying to complete a lap on some of those world cup courses was, was almost impossible. I mean, yeah. there were multiple places where I couldn't finish the feature or I, I wouldn't have the courage to even try it. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, we were, we we're all a group of Americans going over there, never seeing anything like it. And we're, we're, we're standing on top of this feature watching person after person crash. And, and, you know, it just builds up this mental block and it's just different. You're already intimidated racing a world cup and then you can't even ride the course. So <laughs> you're having like anxious dreams the night before thinking about going out and pre-riding a lap on your own the next day. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> How did, uh, how did snowshoe, I mean, you know, back, you know, back in the States, how did, was that course, um, I'm trying to remember if I've watched much of that course. Is that quarter, how was that? Yeah, Just they do a really good job there. Um, and that's a cool race for, or a cool World Cup to be at because 
we had our national championships there a couple years in a row, a few years back. Um, so to see how they've kind of evolved that course into the World Cup course, it's a lot shorter and they've done a really good job of incorporating um technical features handmade or man-made and natural um i would say it's probably one of the more uh, mellow world cup courses but they definitely are evolving it and this year like they made changes to the rock garden and um different different sections so it's a really good course and that one is so cool because it's in the u.s um and of West or snowshoe of all places, but so many people come out and, um, it was, yeah, it's really cool to see all the U S fans. They just get so into it. Um, and the Europeans get super into it too, but something about the, the U S crowds, they're, they're so awesome. Like they get so rowdy and excited to see, um, to see the racers, I think at the, uh, the short track, um, like the the warm up people go and like you ride the course before the race like 20 minutes before to kind of get get to know it and everybody all the crowds were out there just cheering the riders on just in their warm up and um, you don't see that in Europe so it was cool at um two years in a row um two years in a row I sponsor a race here locally and I it's always the same weekend and uh, so, Matt, if you're watching this, sorry, uh, you know, this year, I think the dates are released, right? Um, I think it's this year is coming up or next year's dates are released. And I think it's this. I hope it's not the same. If it is, Matt, I'm not going to sponsor. I'm going to head down. because <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I want to go down there and uh, see that because that is um, a whole nother level, like you say, you know, and I'm one of those super fans that would love to be there. I'd watch the warm ups. I'd watch all that. So, cool. Um, that would be that would be awesome. Hey, uh, switching gears a little bit, um, uh, we have something in common. Not only do we have a bike in common, but uh, you guys are in a van. Do it van. You guys are, are van lifers, not really lifers, but you know, um, yeah. You guys are doing the van thing, and uh, we know Kirk mutually from Traverse City. Cole and I were talking, and um, how's that? Tell us, talk, tell me about the van and, uh, get me all excited that, because I got mine on order. I got to hear. How oh, cool. So yeah. stoked for you. Yeah. And yeah. shout out to Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> Kurt's awesome. Yeah. We, uh, we got to spend a lot of time with him. We were up in Traverse city and, uh, he made us uh, a really good eggs Benedict the, the morning after the race. So side story, but, um, yep. yep. And do it. Yep. Super excited for you. We've loved ours. Uh, we got, we've had it for a year and a half now mm -hmm. and it has, we put 40,000 miles on it driving race to race. That's, that's our race mobile. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's so awesome where we have it so comfortable for us. Um, we're actually doing a, a little mod on it up here right now, but, but yeah, we, the, the idea was so many races throughout the year and we spend all that time either in a hotel room or at the race venue. And mm -hmm. if we want to keep doing this long-term, we, we want to enjoy that, that process of getting to and from the races and seeing things along the way. And the van's been the perfect way to, to make all those, turn all those races into adventures. And, um, and we've loved it. It's, it's been great. Yeah. Yes. And I think, yeah. Well, one thing that um, I think is really special about it is, training out of it in the off season, we've been able to go like, we're usually based in Durango, Colorado, but it's, you, we get a hard winter. So what we've done is we go to warmer weather places and train there. And it allows us to see a, like a, a big diversity of terrain. So it helps us too. when we're, you know, we see all these different kinds of race courses all over the world. And, um, if we train in, in really different places all the time, then we're just a little bit more prepared for those courses. So I think that's something that's been really cool. We spent a lot of time in Sedona, um, just riding there and then all kinds of other places where the terrain is a lot different. So it's something about that kind of mobile, uh, life that that's really unique. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Like we we've done, uh, We've, done, we've evolved all the way through this camping uh, into RVs. And, and so now, you know, the getting the van, actually, I'm going to have mine as a daily driver. And for a lot of the same reasons, we do a lot of, you know, setting up booths and tents and uh, tailgates and uh, um, Dirt Dogs Norte style stuff in parking lots. And 
um, you know, loading the car, unloading the car, you know, all, you know, just um, being able to, I'm just going to leave that stuff in there all, all summer. And just, it's, uh, and like you say, you can um, go and hit one, uh, ride one place, you know, at noon and drive somewhere else if you're going at three and you've got, it, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm heading towards the van life. I, I like the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't forget anything. <laughs> yes. <all> <laughs> And I was kind of blaming my age on that. Like my car, I got a Subaru Force right now and I've got it all, you know, built out. And, and I, my, a lot of my friends are like, you have everything in there. I'm like, pretty much, you, know, <laughs> you don't want to forget that <laughs> extra set of winter gloves. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's talk about, let's last question here and we kind of wrap it up. Um, 2022 plans. Um, Anything you want to, um, I mean, you don't have to put you on a spot and announce or anything, but anything out there, um, 2022, anything big or small or the same that you did this year? Yeah, I think um, racing wise, it's going to be a, a really, another really packed and awesome season. Um, Cole and I are kind of going to be focusing on slightly different things. I'll be um, focusing more on the World Cups and, and U.S. races, and then Cole's going to be focused on um, more domestic, longer uh, endurance races than part of the lifetime series. So for sure, events like uh, Schwamigan and, and uh, Iceman will be definitely on the calendar for him. Yeah, we're super excited. We're, we're also uh, merging onto the Orange Seal off-road team, which is really exciting for us. So nice. this year, we, uh, we're full privateers. We kind of solicited all of our sponsors independently and Orange Seal was our title sponsor and they've gone above and beyond and in, in supporting us and kind of our values. So we're really excited to come on board with them and uh, they're supporting our kind of differing goals, which is awesome. You don't really get that with any sponsor. So we're, we're really excited to move forward with them and, uh, and see where it goes. Yeah. Hey, you just brought up another question. Sorry. Um, I'm lying about last question. So yeah. two rock star athletes, spending a lot of time together a lot of training together i see in the videos we had our first fight we had our first <laughs> how's that how is like living day in day out with another professional athlete brutal yeah. <laughs> brutal <laughs> is she kicking is she kicking you right now <laughs> oh she is, she is like she holds me accountable it's good but Sevilla is like the thing about Sevilla is she trains so hard. She's so focused. And sometimes I'm like, can you just like shut it off? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good because he's actually, he's shown me a little bit of like how to balance life a little bit more. So I think we balance each other well, you know, living in the van together, training out of it. You definitely get to know the other person very well. Um, but we've been together for four years. I think there's not much that we don't know about each other. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, we have fights and mainly those are all uh, shown on the vlogs. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, I love the real part. The real part is what we like to watch, you know, um, so that keep it up there too, guys. So, well, thanks for spending some time. Uh, we'll definitely probably see you down in snowshoe maybe. And uh, um, hopefully definitely up at Iceman when you guys come back up with more, say hi to you guys, maybe do an in-person interview and definitely be screaming at you up the hills and different places up at Iceman. So awesome. yeah, thank well, thanks for having us. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, thank thank you. you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.